Hi, welcome to Mr. Dan Lim .blogspot .sg. Today we are going to do a unit on writing. I will specifically tell you what is inside a compo. Okay, now this video is for upper primary for P5 and P6s. Okay, so if you are younger than that, uh, maybe you can uh, look at my other videos because this is not suitable for the lower primary. Okay, now is a compo a recount or a narrative? Now, what's a recount? A recount is a factual recollection of events like in your police report, a newspaper articles, in your diary entry. Now, what is special about recounts? Uh, what is special about recount is that it, the sequencing of events uh, is important. Okay, what happened first? What happened next? What happened in the end? Okay, so a recount is um, the sequencing is important. Okay, now then what is narrative? A narrative is a story. Okay, it can be your adventure, it can be your fables, it can be your legends, it can be your myths, it can be your fairy tales. Now this, uh, you have, uh, you, it can happen in different settings. Is it in the 1970s? Is it in space? Is it in futuristic world? Is it in a fantasy world where there's magic? Usually there's a problem, there's a bad guy, you want to defeat the ultra bad guy. And then you have your complication, which um, the bad guy becomes stronger. And then you have your resolution, which is your, uh, uh, solution to defeating the bad guy then and the, in the end you have an ending and what is the thing that we can learn what's the moral that we can learn what's the what's the story teaching us okay so this is a uh, narrative so in our compo is it a recount or is it a narrative now it's a bit of both in in actual fact it's a combination of both okay because in your compo the sequencing is important Okay, did you find the wallet first? Then you go to the police station? Or you go to the police station first, then you found the wallet. Now you you will note that the you will notice that the sequencing is important. But it is also a story. Okay, it's not a factual recollection. You're not just telling facts. You are also trying to evoke emotions. Okay, so um, it's also a story. Because it is a combination of both. Okay, you must you must take note of this. Now for writing, uh, in my tuition, right, usually I will use the, these six components, um, to break down the writing so that I know which components to focus on for the student. Okay. We work on, uh, we work components by components. So on each piece of writing, I will focus on one and try to improve on that component. Now C space stands for characters. Okay. Who is the main character? What is the character doing? Okay, then we have the setting. Where is the character? Where is this whole problem that is taking place? Okay, the problem meaning what are we trying to solve? Is it a, is it a bad luck day? Is it a sickness? Is it a fire? Is it a vandalism? Is it bully? Uh, okay, then you have your action. How you solve the problem? Okay, then we have the conclusion, which is the ending. What did we learn from it? And then we have our emotions. Now the emotions are uh, inside. Uh, the other five components. Okay. In characters, what type of emotions are there? In the setting, what type of emotions are there? Okay. In the problem, what type of emotions are there? Now, emotions are important. Okay. They, they are the, they are your heartbeat. Okay. Of the whole writing. If you can evoke emotions well, your writing will seem exciting. If you cannot, uh, evoke the emotions, your writing will be very flat. Like nothing is happening. It's just problem solving the problem, then, then solving more problems. It'll be very boring. Okay, if you can evoke emotions, that's what makes uh, the compo exciting. Okay. Now I'll touch on each of the component very briefly in this lesson because it's an introduction. Uh, in the lessons to come, okay, you will see uh, uh, more. I talk more about each component and how to improve them. Okay. Now for character, okay, you need to determine who is the main character. Is it you are the main character? You are writing from a first person view, or you are a narrator. You are writing from a third person view. You are narrating the whole story. Okay. Now, before I go on to the other points, um, I want to highlight this to you. Okay. Stick to one view. If you are from the third person view, you are narrating, like we are talking about Sally and John. Then throughout you use Sally and John. There cannot be I. Suddenly you have I. I go to the, I went to the principal office. I returned the wallet to the owner. Now this, will be penalized. Okay. Marks will be deducted. If you are 
you will start with a third person view and towards the end suddenly everything change into first first person view then marks will be deducted be very careful about this i see many students making this mistake okay so the best advice that i'm going to give is that you stick to first person view always do first person view now you will not be penalized okay on which view you use but it's very easy for us to adopt a first person view because it's very easy to talk about i i'm i was sick i i found the wallet um i was the one who uh, told the principal that it was my best friend who did it it's very easy to say i so stick to first person view okay now let's move on to the next point development is more important than introduction now i see a lot of students they gain this skill of introducing the the main character very well in the first paragraph but after that there's no development the main character is very flat in the beginning is like that in the end it's still the same okay so development is more important than introduction you will want to introduce your character like um it's a, a bit weak uh, a bit unsure towards the end he becomes very strong he becomes very sure of what he's doing okay that brings me to the second point which is plan his growth and development you must plan when you see you look at the writing topic you must plan his growth he is he's transforming from something to something okay so you must plan his growth what he was in the beginning versus what he was in the end very important in the beginning he must be a like wishy-washy don't know what is right and wrong unsure but in the end morally very strong develop his integrity and he's very sure that next time if he encounters such a thing again he will do the right thing okay so this is what you want the growth of the character okay this is what uh, teachers meant when they put the comment okay there is no development in your story now there is no development sorry it can be development of the setting it can develop it can be develop development of the storyline it can also be the development of the character okay then for the character be realistic okay um we are writing a, a composition okay so the composition is uh is a, a recount of factual events that happen but with emotions so the person must be released you must be realistic when you talk you introduce a character the character cannot have superpowers cannot fly cannot teleport okay cannot catch pokemon okay as in real catching pokemon okay in game yes but in real life there's no there's no fantasy there's no magic okay so be realistic now then, then we we have the setting component the setting component is about the environment okay where is this problem taking place okay what what was the main character doing um now you want to bring the setting you want to change the setting also okay it's like a movie at first very peaceful nothing is happening then suddenly very chaotic a lot of things happening a lot of problems coming out problems after problems very chaotic the main character struggling okay was struggling to solve the problems and then towards the end become peaceful again okay everything is soft okay how do we describe the setting we use the five senses what can be seen what can be heard what can be smelled what can be felt and what can be tasted now tasted must be careful um you can only use this sense when it's something to do with tasting like your food or, or you're drinking something okay show and not tell if you are p6 or p5 now by now i think your teachers will have drummed this into you or if this is the first time you're hearing this then let me drum this into you show and not tell show and not tell means that you are telling you are describing everything about the environment but you're not telling what's happening i'll give you an example you can describe the raindrops describe the thunder describe the lightning flashes you can describe the sounds the the rain makes make when they are drumming on the on the window panes but you're not telling the reader or your marker okay that it's raining it's drizzling is a storm no you will not tell about you will not tell the weather to your to your marker but you show everything now this is a skill in writing is very important during my time it is uh it is a plus skill okay meaning if you can do this you can get a lot of marks but during your time now it is a de facto meaning what it is it is a must to show and not tell once you are just telling your story your story will be very flat you you're just going to get a just pass you will not get a good mark for it okay it's raining it's raining heavily uh it's sunny uh the sun was scorching hot when well, you're telling the weather was hot now instead of telling you can show okay in the in the lesson on setting i will i will, sh I will, I will show you how this is being done 
Okay, now create a setting that can be felt by the reader. Now you want to describe in such a way that you want the emotions, you want to bring out the emotions uh, in your marker. Okay, you want the, the, the marker to really feel hot, really feel cold, feel anxious, feel uh, feel pressurized, feel stressed. Okay, so you want, you want to create the setting. Okay, then once emotions is there, your writing will be exciting. Okay, then we have the problem. Now problem uh, in your in your main topic, it will be given to you. Okay, if it's talking about a sickness, then it'll be verse, you are, you are, you are versing the, you are versing the environment, which is a sickness. Now it can be a bully. You can be versing other people like your bullies, your parents, or you're versing yourself. Okay, your morals, your desires, or versing, uh, fire or bad luck. Okay. Now pick on one problem and stick to it throughout. You want to develop the problem. You don't want to to switch from problem to problem they're like for example uh if this story is about bully you encounter bully one then you can talk can encounter bully two then you encounter bully three then you solve all the three problems at your fourth paragraph or fifth paragraph very boring okay because you have many problems and many solutions but you're not evoking emotions you're not developing the story okay what is better is that you have one bully but you develop the exchange between you and the bully. What happened? How you develop the story? How you, how the bully uh, is very, the, the bully was very strong and how you struggled with the bully and how you win over the bully or how did the matter resolve? Okay. It's better than you have a lot of problems, a lot of solutions. One problem, a lot of development, one solution. Okay. That will be the best uh, thing you can do for your writing. Okay. Um, why was he struggling? Now this one uh, will help you score marks. Um, describe how the main character or how you are struggling with this main problem. Okay, the hard, the more you, the harder you struggle, the more marks will be given to you when the solution comes. Because you imagine if you are struggling with a very big problem, and when the sol solution comes, it's going to create a very big impact. But if just a very small problem, the solution comes, then very small impact only. So the, the excitement is not there. It's just like watching a movie. Okay, one wow, a lot of action, a lot of a lot of uh, problem, problem become bigger and bigger. Okay? Now that brings us to the action. Action is uh to make the problem bigger. Okay? To this one is your development of the story. You want to score a high mark? This is the place where you need to put a lot of effort in. Okay, you have a problem, you found a wallet, you you are struggling whether to return the wallet or not. Now, where is the action? The action comes when you are, you are determined to go and return the wallet. You are, you already decided to return the wallet. You walk towards the, you walk, to walk towards the, uh, you're, you're walking towards the address that was in the wallet and you pass by a toy shop and there was a special offer on the toy that you have been saving for a very long time. And it was the last set. Now, you see how I emphasize the problem? The problem becomes bigger and bigger. Now the struggle is really there. Should I buy? Should I just use the money first and then I save up later and then I return the wallet later? Now there's an internal struggle here because it's your desire against your morals. Okay, so you can make the, they'll make the problem bigger. Okay, now, um, make the problem bigger seem unsolvable and when you solve it, then you, have a uh, high marks. Okay, increase the struggle with the elements. Now is uh for this point is for uh this one is for the the when you are struggling with the environment. Let's say you are bad luck, your luck get worse. Okay, or the bus just don't come. The bus the bus seem perpetually late, and you are in a hurry. Okay, you are struggling with all the other elements. It suddenly rain and rain heavily and become flooded, and the roads were jammed. Okay, you you think about the struggle. You develop the problem, the very, very big problem. Okay. Amplify the stress of decision making. Now, this is the part where the example I gave you just now, there's an internal struggle. The main character would not know what to do. Wanted to do this, but not sure. You know, that's, it seems better. You know, there, there seems to be a better choice. It seems, uh, it seems more desirable. Okay. To, to do, to make a, a, a different decision. Okay. When you have the, the struggle there, and then you overcome the struggle, then there'll be a lot of marks. Okay. Okay. So now this is, uh, 
this is where the main character achieve a breakthrough now breakthrough is the term that i use that uh, many teachers or many uh, tutors okay cannot put a finger to to what's happening when we say develop 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 the character what do we mean in actual fact what we want to see is actually a breakthrough okay meaning there's some form of invisible ceiling that long uh, before that the, the the character couldn't 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 break through in this area keeps on thinking that he's uh you know like he you're you're telling the reader that he's selfish he cannot he cannot he cannot think for other people but after this incident or after at the end approaching the end of the story the main character suddenly ding suddenly wake up and achieve a breakthrough in this now this is what we are going to we want to see when we say development the character achieve a breakthrough or the environment or the or the setting achieve a breakthrough okay that's the, the, this is this is a lesson by itself okay um in 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 another slide i will talk a lot about this now this is the part where um you leave a very good feeling okay with the examiner or with the marker wow this character wow, what a what a journey the character finally okay become somebody stronger okay now conclusion is your ending now the ending uh just like i said just now okay you uh, contrast it with the beginning in the beginning what happened now in the end what happened how different it, it is okay beware of cliffhanger ending now this is uh this this point is also in the other slide or on conclusion okay i put it specially here just in case you don't see the next slide okay i mean the next presentation okay be very careful about this my advice is don't use cliffhanger ending now what's a cliffhanger ending a cliffhanger ending is when the character uh sorry the 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 writer okay that means you you write okay you leave the the ending hanging there don't know is it good or bad okay i, I give you an example uh the petrol that was leaking on the floor was uh, finding its way to an open flame i ran towards the car i wanted to save my baby brother but could I? Oh, that is, this is the ending. But could I? Now, be very careful when you use cliffhanger ending. If you don't, if you don't use it well, you will look uncompleted. Your, your, your essay will, will like, be like, uh, unfinished. Okay, it's like, not, not finished. Then you have, you have a very big problem because once your essay is not completed, a lot of marks will be deducted. Okay, so my advice to you is never to use cliffhanger ending never okay because it's it's hard for you to 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 carry it out and it's also hard for uh teachers or the markers right to detect whether is this a cliffhanger ending okay i've seen very good cliffhanger endings before but i've also seen very disastrous ones so my advice is against this okay you have a lot of other endings you can use okay don't don't use a uh, cliffhanger ending now then the last one is peaceful note um this one you want to evoke positive feelings in your in your marker before he gives you the mark imagine your ending chaos 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 throughout all chaos then your 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 marker will be very disarrayed and you know like what well, very disrupted don't know what mark to give you want to end it with very peaceful happily ever after ending okay a good positive ending with good feelings okay then your examiner will feel good and will give you a good mark okay now at the end of the story okay what you want to see this one um you want to see the development of the main character okay you want to see that uh either he developed better relationships develop better values or he has better understanding of himself okay or there's there's a development uh there's a development of the environment there's a bullying incident so now there are new rules there's a new system to to um to prevent such things from happening again okay so there are two types okay in fact there are a few more types which i will talk about in my uh in my presentation on ending okay now emotions how the main character felt throughout the story you want to bring the the marker throughout okay the different type of feelings happy stress more stress then relief okay so there's a up there's a down there's a up or there's up then down down then up again okay then you can have very sad in the beginning feeling very sad then somebody cheer him up very happy then some something happened then very stressed in the end become happy again you want to have a different the the changes in the emotions so to give your writing 
uh, a sense of excitement okay so uh, beware of this emotions is your heartbeat of the writing if you have you input a lot of good emotions your writing will be very exciting okay now systematic and practice um, I want to encourage my students okay that uh, the C space is a standard template that I come up with that you can actually improve on the individual components uh, slowly let's say you can do right character just improve on character keep improving on character then you then you go on to the setting okay it's very difficult to improve on all the components in one writing imagine you hand in a compo to me I mark and there's so many things I need to tell you how to develop your character how to develop your setting how to develop your problem how to develop your action everything that's gonna the debrief is gonna take a very long time and in the end is I don't think you can write everything out because you're not me so um, it's always better to um, focus on one and just practice that first uh, slowly a little bit by little bit improve and then put all the components together then do one writing it will be better you'll be easier you'll be less stressful and it will be less daunting also it will be more it seem more is it seem more plausible okay to improve now be realistic this one I couldn't emphasize more remember that this is not fantasy this writing is not fantasy there's no magic there's no teleporting there's no uh, impressive gadgets you know some sometimes we put in like well he has this calculator that can uh, know uh, people's danger when it, it comes you know, that we are not talking about fantasy there's no magic involved okay there's no sci-fi so be realistic it must be something that is everyday very realistic something that can happen okay small steps something that I said just now okay each component one step at a time okay now this is important um, we have to focus on grammar first in your whole piece of writing I have seen writing with very good structures um, very bad grammar no full stops or a lot of full stops no commas uh, no capital letters uh, no paragraphing tenses all wrong a lot of spelling mistakes now you have a, if you have a lot of glaring uh, grammar mistakes it leaves a very bad impression okay now grammar is uh, not your grammar and your language right it's not the um, it's, it actually doesn't have a higher weightage in your in your scoring but okay I highly encourage you if you have a problem with your grammar your with your sentences go and improve on that first why because you're not only doing writing in PSLE there's also an English paper the English paper will have comprehension will have close passage we have grammar MCQ vocab MCQ and grammar close we have a lot a lot on that because this is a language paper so go and improve on your language first your grammar your sentence structure okay and then you improve on your story structure okay your story structure is important uh, a good beginning a good story a good ending is important because you're writing a story you're writing uh, something that is happening so you must have a good structure if you don't have a good structure don't have good links then you will have a problem okay the, the, the writing will seem segmented and and uh, not connected and you have a very bad piece of writing the last thing to improve is vocabulary that is why um, for most of my students who uh, who did writing with me I have very few lessons with them with vocabulary because there's so much to improve on grammar and on structure that I virtually has have no time to to uh, brush up on their vocab now vocab is important only when you settle your grammar and structure your story structure then you you talk about your idioms you talk about good vocab vocabulary words okay if you have very good vocabulary words you don't have good grammar you don't have good structure you're going to score very badly for your writing because a language is not a language paper is not only about the vo vocabulary okay remember this only if you have very limited time focus on grammar focus on structure first vocabulary will come very very much later okay now be wise in your investment in time um, small steps I encourage small steps every day do a bit 50 words uh, 100 words okay now you may think that 50 words is like um, very little um, every day uh, it's not okay you can go and do now write 50 words on the beginning for uh, a uh, compo on beach at the beach 
when go and do now 50 words you will find that you need quite some time so 50 words or if you find that 50 words is too daunting 25 words okay for a beginning okay go and go and try at least do something at least do something every day then your writing will improve okay now small chunks uh work better than big big chunks okay if you spend four hours doing one piece of writing um i would rather okay you spend half an hour each day on one segment of the writing okay only when you practice enough you improve enough then you sit down and do one whole piece of writing maybe uh every day practice one component for half an hour every two weeks do one big piece of writing one full writing okay that would be a good gauge a uh, good plan okay don't every week do one full writing very difficult to improve very difficult to 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 improve on the components okay now handwriting now this is something that i tell all my students okay impression counts okay um if you have very good talent in writing okay or you are very good at writing but your handwriting cannot make it i cannot make out the words that you are writing then what's the point of reading it's very difficult to read okay imagine okay the teacher the teacher has 200 scripts to mark when he sees or when she sees a piece of untidy handwriting it will be a massive struggle before even he or she read read the writing so must remember this okay even though handwriting has no marks at all it has no marks at all in the scoring component but the impression is strong remember this if you have good impression good handwriting somehow or rather your marks will be plus one or plus two okay it's the impression it just comes naturally from the eyes of the teacher you have very untidy handwriting it's very difficult okay to to link good writing to bad handwriting okay now um this is just the the introduction okay to the, the components in a compo i hope this will be useful to you and if you are a parent you are watching this video i want to encourage you okay to also do some writing yourself okay do some writing yourself uh, before you teach then uh, before you tutor your child then you can you, you have an idea that it's, it's not that easy okay it's easy to criticize but it's very difficult um, to to do it okay so um, I hope you you enjoy this lesson and you I, I gave you something of value okay because it's uh it's actually quite time consuming to come up with the the video on this okay I hope you appreciate this thank you very much until then, this is Mr. Danny Lim. Have fun.